Hey man, you deserve it, daddy. You put in that work. Hey man, you deserve it, daddy. There was a time where I was sipping lean, I was popping pills, I was doing molly, um, you know, shrooms, everything. And it was just an escape. Well, it's not your game. You didn't make the rules. So everything comes hard. As long as you're signed to a contract, you're going to take a minority share of the winnings. A select few of us will do well. The majority will not. So as a people, we'll be considered a minority. But stop, let's take a moment and look at yourselves. There's nothing minor about you. You are a blessed people. You're the most talented on earth and you are still grateful. That is why upon winning in their game, you always thank God. Tonight I would like to ask one favor of you. Imagine what we'll all be like in our own game. Peace and love for one another. They took out Prince and Michael Jackson for speaking the truth. And they made Michael Jackson look like a freakazoid. But in actuality, the real freakazoid is right in front of our faces. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Meanwhile. Jada Pinkett and Will Smith, you told me before that she was at a party before that they attended and you said the party was weird. Tell me about that. Okay. Uh, we went to the party with her. I mean, it was a matter of fact, it was a set it off party. Jada Pinkett, Vivica Fox, all of them was there. You know what I'm saying? It was just, uh, seemed like Puff and Tupac was like a couple, seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on, you know what I'm saying? The vibes ain't there. I guess that, that's what Tupac was talking about, the Illuminati and shit. It's like Vivica Fox was with this big gay man. He was 6'9". They called him, his name 6'9". He had the red hair with a big old booty and shit. No, he was gay and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? It's just a lot of a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? That shit, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's what Tupac, I guess he wanted to get up out of the Illuminati or something. The diddler, the ghetto Epstein, is in all these weird stories. He's like the gay Thanos, the final boss of all gay lords. Now, according to the book of King Bustanut, he once stated, Diddle me this, diddle me that. Don't party with Diddy, says the wise cat. Don't let Diddy take you shopping, or you will get bent, says the OG named 50 Cent. Thank you, Brian, our fellow subscriber, for sharing that poem. However, not everyone who attends Diddy's parties stays sane enough to tell the tale. Take YK Osiris for one. You think... Rapping and singing is a blessing. You're not using God in vain, in his name in vain. That's not a blessing from God. Stop saying it's a blessing from God. It's not a blessing. It's a blessing, for, it's a blessing from the devil. The Florida rapper emerged on the scene as a promising young artist in 2017. Following his debut on the internet, it didn't take him long to be picked up by Def Jam Recordings. However, YK Osiris' stint with Def Jam Recordings proved to be a short one as he only released one album the Golden Child, under the label. After being let go from Def Jam Recordings, YK Osiris' career kinda took a nosedive. However, that's where Diddy came swooping in. As a front runner in the game, Diddy probably promised to show YK the ropes. However, what fans weren't expecting was spotting YK on a vacation with Diddy in Jamaica. Now, keep in mind that YK was struggling financially during this time. He had blown off all his money and had nothing in the bank. So it meant that Diddy paid for the trip. Things took a concerning turn when YK reposted a photo of a shirtless Diddy on his Instagram with the praying emojis. Now why would YK feel the need to share a picture of a shirtless Diddy? He was asked about the trip to Jamaica during an interview with The Breakfast Club, and surprisingly, YK found himself at a loss of words. He laughed off the questions and lied that he wasn't in Jamaica with Diddy, but someone else. 
Okay, I, I, I was uh, with a shawty. All right, but Diddy was there. No, he was what? a whole other different. Oh, so they just made this up? Yeah, they made it up, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, he was in a whole other different area. Like, he was like... <laughs> Have you ever met Diddy? Yeah. Okay, did he ask you to party? Yeah. Party, party? <laughs> now, when Diddy says he wants to party with you, to translate this in the language of Guyanese, he wants to play with your bungle hole. We already knew what he did with Usher. The young and innocent Usher was exposed to explicit activities carried out by other celebrities under Diddy's watch. And not just that, he and Diddy even shared a bed. Man, this is really disturbing. Could that be what he wanted to do with young Justin as well? Expose him to things improper for his age. I mean, Diddy even confessed he didn't have legal custody over Justin as he had with Usher. So he had no right to expose Justin the way he did. The ultimate proof that Justin was influenced negatively is his confession of his struggles with addiction and breaking the law. The superstar opened up in his docuseries that he was using drugs early in his career and couldn't do without them. There was a time where I was sipping lean, I was popping pills, I was doing molly, um, you know, shrooms, everything. And it was just an escape. I mean, doesn't that sound like Diddy's influence? We can connect these dots because Justin was signed to Usher when he started his music career. After performing for Usher at the studio, it didn't take long for Usher to sign him, giving Diddy access to Justin because Usher was mentored and groomed by Diddy. As we clearly saw, it didn't go well for Justin. According to him, he said he wanted to have a sustainable heart and career. He also told fans that he didn't want to fall apart as he needed to fix some deep-rooted issues in his life and thanks to his wife Haley and other people around him he had all the support he needed to fight off the bad influence from his teenage years and get clean it's truly disgusting how parents are willing to sell their own flesh and blood for fame and money it's heartbreaking and most of the people who are in Hollywood this is what happens when their deal with the devil expires and do you know what these people in Hollywood are called? They're called the gatekeepers. Ice Cube, take it away. A lot of you listening to me right here, right now, you're not part of the club either. And what I realized with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't want to be a part of the club, that pisses them off. What club am I talking about? I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers. The important thing is, you know, for me to go on these platforms, say what I feel about what I think. And, you know, some people may get pissed off because I'm going to talk to everybody. The only gatekeepers for what is really meant for you is God and your level of integrity. Now, to this so-called cult called gatekeepers, or should I say gatekeepers, have their own puppets to carry out their agenda, like this guy. If Trump gets elected, I, I really do believe in my heart there'll be a race war. That's why this message is not just to black people. You know what I'm saying? This message is to, to everybody. Oh, this man is really trying to turn us against each other and put us in a situation. America. Is it just me? Or am I starting to notice something about the people who tell us not to vote for Mr. Trump? Now, America, I want you guys to take a look at this tweet. This came from your current president, Mr. Joe Biden. You are America, and my entire administration, and I have your back. Bullshit. Now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024 as Transgender Day of visibility. I don't give a two rats ass 
fucking in a ranch Dorito bag what this old bag of raisins have to say. Biden can declare it all he wants. But March 31st, 2024, Sunday, is the resurrection day of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it will always will be. Now, it gets deeper. They're trying to replace God with bafflement. Now, we're about to cross lines we're not supposed to cross. So close this video now because it's about to get uncomfortable if you can't handle it. The, in the ritual of Baphomet, the transgender, to show allegiance to him. This is about to get very weird because we're about to go down a rabbit hole. But I need you guys to stay with me. So the Baphomet is a transgender devil. Half goat, half human occult symbol appears in popular culture movements in the contemporary as an image of rebellion by the satanic temple Baphomet videos on TikTok and many others. This paper traces the depictions of Baphomet and the removal of its breast from, from an obscure occult symbol to recognizable pop culture reference in the name and image. More specifically, examining these initial visual representation and their contemporary counterparts as part of a transphobic and cis normative project that erases the utility of trans symbols for trans satanists. Doesn't this sound familiar to everything that's going on right now? They're creating a world government mark of the beast. 2.2 billion people just got told they can't use certain words. They're announcing giant cult-like brainwashing. They're teaching five-year-olds how to suck cock. The fact that YK had a mental breakdown on his Instagram a while later didn't help things either. During the shocking footage, he talked about unaliving himself. He even mentioned that he had no friends in the industry, which came as a shock to fans since he used to be tight with Diddy. Fucking everybody, like, nigga, this shit is not right, my nigga. So what the fuck I'm living for? Like, why the fuck I'm on this earth for? Like, why, like, Osas, why you have even, like, why you have even, like, this, this fucking, Crash like this do something that, that like at this point like why the fuck you on this earth still like why you still Why the fuck you like why the hell you on this earth? Why when nobody fucks with you? It's like You don't have nobody like what the fuck are you on this earth for? YK also called out fans for praising artists in the industry in his eyes They were all devils who had managed to fool the public man give me all these all these stupid ass talks Oh this God is God blesses what God wants you to do. No, this is not what God wants you to do you go through all this shit, the devil give you all this money, go through all this shit to just destroy yourself. You, 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 you destroy yourself. This is not God blessing, my nigga. God don't want you to do no, God don't want you to talk about no sex, money, cars, clothes, and hoes. What makes you, what makes you think this a blessing? What makes you think that? It appears that YK ventured too close to Diddy's orbit and paid the ultimate price, sacrificing his sanity in the process. Given YK's downfall, and his close relationship with Diddy, it seems like there might be some truth to the rumors about Diddy exploiting young artists at his parties for his personal satisfaction after all. So whether it's Kevin Hart spilling the beans or Jamie Foxx pulling back the curtains on Diddy's wild parties, Diddy's rowdy gatherings sound like something straight out of an R-rated film. It's an exclusive event for the chosen few. Fans might have turned a blind eye if it were just nights filled with drug-fueled celebrations and endless drinking. However, that's not the case. These gatherings serve as a setting for Diddy and his inner circle to exploit young artists. As more industry sources step forward to blow the horn on what goes on behind closed doors, one cannot help but wonder if Diddy's days of partying are nearing their end. The recent revelations have certainly shaken the ground beneath the rapper. At this point, there's no telling what the future holds for Diddy. Is this where it ends for the rapper? Will more close comrades jump ship to avoid sharing the music mogul's fate? Only time will tell. It's very simple. Don't ever sell your soul because if they don't feed you, they can't starve you. Now, selling your soul for temporary pleasure and fun in this life, but consequently an eternity of suffering in the next life, the juice is not worth the squeeze.
Now, before I end this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And to all my Christian and Muslim brothers, religion should not divide us. It should unite us so we can fight the bigger battle. Gentlemen, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Them niggas who was at did this shit, toasting with that champagne every year. <laughs> having speeches with me. Ain't nobody speak up for this man or nothing. Uh, yeah. so, so they say something when you're on top of the world, it's a celebration. When you're on the bottom, it's a denialation. Bruh, same <laughs> motherfucker you see going up, you gonna see coming down. All the motherfuckers all with them suits on, with they cuffs up. Ain't nobody said nothing. Like, <laughs> they ain't, fool. Man, as <laughs> soon as they say something, they in the crosshair, fool. Boy, this world, boy, this world, so boy. This world, boy. So, so you was around Diddy, too. That's why you ain't gonna see too many niggas around me. Who was around me before I went to jail? You don't see too many niggas around me. Cause them niggas, them niggas did me like did it for did it people. P. Diddy, if you're out there watching this, please report to the nearest rainbow where you can taste all the gay Skittles. Ooh. Brother, ooh. what's that? What's that, brother?